what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here we're going to talk about a few different horror topics in this video here today well just three we're going to talk about scream 7 we're going to talk about terrifier 3 and then we're going to actually talk about surprise surprise ready or not 2 i'm going to kick this video off by talking about scream 7 so variety has learned that courtney cox is in talks to reprise her role as gail weathers in scream 7 this news comes after daniel rpk reportedly heard that she was locked which again must mean if she hadn't already signed that he must have heard she's going to sign so might as well call it a locked return i'm just trying to paint this from his perspective all i heard about cox was that she was down to do it even though she hadn't even read a script this was from a recent encounter that she had had like I said before, just make good use of Gail and there should be no problems. Yes, I have heard and read about Melissa Barrera's silence when asked about Nev Campbell reaching out to her. But I want to draw attention and raise a question on something really quick. Does anyone really believe that Kevin Williamson was Spyglass's first option to direct Scream 7? I'm just asking us to leave fandom for a second and just be realistic. My point behind this is just consider that this company, Spyglass, went after Radio Silence for Scream 5 and 6. Then they exited them, according to another recent report with an interview, I think, that came from Melissa Barrera. They exited them because Radio Silence wanted to commit to Abigail and Spyglass didn't want to wait. Then they brought in Landon. Both parties, Radio Silence and Christopher Landon, have more history directing than Kevin Williamson. So after losing Landon, why would you say, hey, Let's go get the person who has only directed one movie, the creator of the franchise. Love him to death, but there's no way that that's what happened. Spyglass struck out in their efforts to secure someone is what I've been hearing. And that's not hard to believe considering Kevin is the one who ended up getting the job. Allegedly, one director wanted nothing to do with the project unless Melissa Barrera was involved and unless Jenna Ortega was involved or unless it was a reboot of sorts. All again seems fairly believable considering who ended up in the director's seat. I'm sure Kevin Williamson will do a tremendous job. I'm just trying to point out the obvious. There's no way he was your first choice. There's absolutely no way. Why would you go from tenured directors to Kevin Williamson? Just something to think about. Diving into Terrifier 3. So Damien Leone tweeted this out recently. He said, can honestly say we just filmed one of the most insanely horrific scenes of the Terrifier franchise and you'll never believe who couldn't handle it on set. The behind the scenes is hilarious. Can't wait for you all to see. Now with filming still underway and without any behind the scenes images associated with this tweet, I can only imagine what happens in this horrific sequence that he's referencing. We've already seen some of the most grotesque things from these first two movies. So what is Art the Clown cooking up for us now? If he's even featured in this sequence that Damien's talking about. I'm going to predict that the person who couldn't handle it was either Lauren Levera or Howard Thornton who plays Art the Clown. I want to lean on Thornton just because it would be unbelievable and ironic considering he plays Art the Clown, who does some of the most grotesque things in the franchise. Chris Jericho has also recently revealed some interesting details about his time shooting this sequel. He made these comments back in January during his Rock and Wrestling Rager at Sea Cruise. He says, yes, Terrifier 3, I will be doing that. It was cool. I actually had to get this computer mold of my head. Back in the day, you would put paper mache or whatever it was over your head. Now, didn't Jericho also previously say he won't last long in the film? So with a comment like this about his head, will we see a headless Chris Jericho? Does Art just go to town on his entire face before ripping his head off? Time will tell. Now let's talk about some cast members who could potentially be involved. Mason McCarty and Alexa Blair may be joining the mayhem Art has planned for us later this year. Phil Falcone posted this image of the two and we see he's rocking his Terrifier 2 shirt and Damien Leone liked this post as well. So this is all just pure speculation on my end. But who could they be playing if they are in fact in the film? Well, Terrifier 3 is expected to have a time jump since Jonathan is now in college. And I'd imagine this is Jonathan's friend or roommate and the girlfriend character. Characters that were both highlighted in the casting call that came out for Terrifier 3. But let me know what you think about that regarding Terrifier 3 and Scream 7 down in the comment section below. What do you think about Courtney Cox being in talks? What do you think this sequence is that Damien Leone is talking about in relation to Terrifier 3? 
Do you think Chris Jericho will end up losing his head during Terrifier 3? We're going to shift gears and talk about Ready or Not 2. So Ready or Not 2 is in the works with Adam Robitaille reportedly in talks to direct and Samara Weaving returning as Grace. Now this came from Jeff Snyder. Shout out to you. He's been reliable and very reputable in the past. But where can the story go since she was the sole survivor? Well, for starters, let's examine the original ending that we almost got. According to Radio Silence themselves, there was almost an ending an ending where these rich suits gathered around a table to acknowledge Mr. LaBelle or something like that, effectively establishing that this demon has indeed made deals across the globe or the nation, and some of the most wealthiest people are tied to it. Chad Valella specifically told Bloody Disgusting this back in 2019. He said, we also wanted to do this end tag where we were these two Joe Schmoes walking down this extravagant ballroom, a La Morlago, and they walk into a convention hall and it's La it's a LaBelle conference and there's a whole bunch of rich people there to show the expanse of it all. So like a post credit scene, I guess. I have no idea where Ready or Not 2 goes, if not down the very obvious setup. Grace voluntarily turns herself into a widow in an effort to escape her newly twisted family. And while LaBelle nods at her for the victory, it's more than just a show of respect on my end. She likely is now going to be a very wealthy woman now with a debt that she's inherited because of that wealth. That's from the that's from the LaBelle demon to that family. So if you're taking on their wealth, you're going to owe him a sacrifice the same way we were seeing how there was a sacrifice that was made at the beginning of the film. I don't think anything's broken just because Grace broke Grace won the game. She's going to now have to give LaBelle something in return for her newly received wealth. I could see a movie playing out where Grace is forced to go after someone maybe she becomes in contact with other people who are rich and elite because of labelle and at the end of it all we're going to be exploring morals and what's right and wrong maybe grace will die because she turns on these other people who are labelle connections or, or who are connected to labelle and she decides to help her fiance escape it after she initially agreed to kill and knock off her spouse because if she doesn't labelle told her if you don't give me a sacrifice you only have 10 years to enjoy your wealth or i'm going to kill you you make your decision I think we could see something like that play out where it's morals versus like she's having a moral warfare inside of her mind. That's all I'm trying to get at. But let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all of my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.